If I was going to buy a jersey based on how it looked, with no care about the team, who would I pick? Whose uniforms do I think were the best through the years? Okay. I've been in the car for two hours, three, driving, man. How do I look? I look okay? Everybody wants to look good. You look good. You feel good. You feel good. You play good. In the NFL, your uniform goes a long way toward how you look. Then we have all black. We have black jerseys, white pants. I love y'all uniforms, man. I think there's a real power to uniforms. Know what you're playing for when you're in this uniform. Some uniforms are simply more desirable than others. When I was with the Cardinals, the Cardinal that was on our head, we used to call it chicken head. We used to call it, get your chicken head on. I don't know what they wear today. I don't know what that is. I think it's very important to have that identification. Purple and gold is where it's at, though. Players come and go, especially in the age of the salary cap, they move around. So what you have left to root for, it's that logo, those colors, that uniform. I mean, that's what you're rooting for or rooting against. Throw back that. <laughs> We begin our countdown of the top 10 uniforms of all time with an outfit we can all root for. The number 10 uniform of all time. Cheerleader. Number 10. My particular favorite is all of them. Get excited, little fella. Who has fired up? What makes a good cheerleader uniform? Yes. If you're putting a cheerleader in it, it's a good uniform. It's like shooting fish in a barrel. Cheerleaders, number one. Number two, everything else. That's just what the doctor ordered when you're in a little bit of a funk. You have nine things in the NFL uniform-wise better than cheerleaders. I don't know what to say about that. I've never looked at a cheerleader uniform. I've looked at cheerleaders, but I'm always looking where the uniform isn't. I don't watch the cheerleaders that much. I'm just joking. I do it. <laughs> oh, my. What a glorious sight to behold. It's true that cheerleader uniforms don't get that much attention. But still, they check in at number 10 based on creativity and variety. Do you mean skimpy Halloween costumes like the nurses thing and the naughty devil and the angel? Yeah, I didn't see those. This has gone beyond ridiculous. I do like the Mrs. Claus ones. You know, when the girls are wearing the tight Mrs. Claus outfits, just something about that that really puts me in the holiday spirit. Merry Christmas. I'm going to go look at the beautiful cheerleaders that we have. But what actually makes a good cheerleading uniform? Got to have dazzle. Got to have sparkles. I got cheerleaders, huh? There needs to be some sort of knot right here that's, that was very hastily constructed so that it seems as if there's just, there's just this sort of bulging effect. Some days you wake up and it's just your day. I like the chillies are moving away from like the skirts and just doing more hot pants. I mean, what's the purpose of wearing a little bitty skirt anyway? They're like kicking up their legs, they're doing flips, so I like the hot pants look for the girls. The Cowboys cheerleader uniform is iconic, it's classic, it hasn't changed over the years, but to me, the Raiders, just a bad girl, bad girl, what you gonna do? Oh yeah, that is brutal right there. It's one thing to put them in like the Dallas Cowboy outfits, which are pretty awesome. That's another thing to dress them up in like old Victorian garb. I mean, like, is there a chastity belt under that thing? The bottom line for our number 10 uniform? You know you need to have a cheerleading outfit? Not that much outfit. Coming up, a certain color cracks our list, but for which uniform? No one, and I repeat, no one looks good in orange. Of all the hundreds of NFL uniforms through the years, only a select few are being singled out on our list. But our show would not be complete without mentioning the worst of the rest. First of all, I never like the wearing the same color jersey and pants, you know, the monochromatic look. You like these red uniforms? Huh? You like these red uniforms? Yeah, I'm holding you personally responsible for making me look like the Kool-Aid man. I like a bunch of popsicles out there. 
In 2009, the Seattle Seahawks took going green to the extreme. The original plan was to have Green Day play at halftime. We were going to be pushing the environment. We were going to give everyone recyclable bags. Well, all of that fell by the wayside, and we were left to run out on the field in those silly lime green jerseys. We took them all out of my house. They were all burned. Those have been retired. <laughs> That was part of the recent trend of alternate uniforms, which rarely seemed to hit the mark. Those mustard uniforms were like a bad McDonald's outfit. How oh. ugly that is. Oh, yeah. The current Buffalo Bills uniform is just a disaster. And they've got all that trim and piping around the shoulder and the chest. But you know me, I make anything look good. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, which might explain the next number on our list. The number nine uniform of all time, the Creamsicle Bucks. That was the colors. So orange and white was fine with me. Yeah, I, w I won't say I was excited about wearing that particular uniform. I was fine with the colors. You know, maybe we could have switched the mascot up a little different. <laughs> yeah, that is not good. The expansion Bucks arrived in the NFL in 1976 and instantly made their mark. It was a color that had never been worn on an NFL field before for a new team that had never been on the field before. And so, you know, there was something nice about that. That's I've never seen anything like this in my life. Brand new franchise, trying something new. They take a dead movie actor, Errol Flynn, and put him on the side of the helmet. Time to go back to the drawing board. The winking pirate should have told us early on that we were in trouble. I'm sure the guys were like, um, we don't go around winking with knives in our mouth, so maybe we don't want that on the side of our head. Thanks to the Bucks' putrid play, our number nine uniform soon became synonymous with losing. If you have to go 0-14 in one season, that's the uniform you want to do it in. You can't stop a pass or a run. Otherwise, we're in great shape. At first, you thought it was kind of cool to have that orange, and then you realize the other teams were basically laughing at the Bucks. No, no, no. In the late 90s, the Bucks finally ditched their longtime look. As soon as the Bucks got new uniforms, they won their division, went to the playoffs, and, and everything was okay. It wasn't Tony Dungy's impact. It was the new uniforms that got the Bucks in the playoffs. Orange, creamsicle, red, Bucko Bruce, never happened. You know, the orange represented at the time a losing franchise. Our mascot wasn't the manliest of <laughs> manly stickers on our helmets. In 2009, the Bucks finally sanitized our number nine uniform. There was no amount of deodorant that you could use to get the stink of losing off of those uniforms, and that's why they were bad back then. But now that they're throwbacks, they're hip now. That's why they belong on the list. The most spectacular comeback! I would say it's among the most important uniforms, because it, it definitely broke new ground, for better or worse. It was a landmark of a sort. I don't know if I would call it one of the best, but it was definitely one of the most significant. I am always feel like those are some pretty good uh, uniforms. And I think also the ladies enjoyed the, those guys in the white pants bending over in the huddle. The number eight uniform of all time. The Bengals switch to stripes. If there's anywhere you're going to put a pattern on a man, I would much prefer to see it on his helmet or on a tie. <laughs> Prior to their dramatic change, the Cincinnati Bengals could have easily been mistaken for their in-state rivals. They look just like the Browns uniforms, and I'm going, oh, wait a minute. The uniforms look alike. What are they doing? Paul Brown is just like, I'm just going to put the exact same uniform on my new team. I don't care. And they put Bengals along the side like that was going to make a difference. That is like the ultimate, like, bitter, angry, vengeful. Like, that's, I got my new team. I'm going to dress them in exactly the same clothes I had the old team in. Art Modell objected to that. You stole my uniform, he said. This was at a league meeting, and my dad said, well, who stole whose uniform? <laughs> Any Browns fans who are upset about him taking the colors could feel better about the fact that he chose the lamest helmet design ever. Could there be anything sadder? There's a classic photo of Paul Brown sitting in his office looking at helmet prototypes that had been brought in, and to think he had all these things to choose from, and he came up with really you know, arguably the weakest helmet design in NFL history. My dad had this helmet in his office, a stripe design. But the stripes were all the same size, and we used to tell him it looked like a barber's pole. 
1981, our number eight uniform made quite a splash. My first reaction, honestly, was yipes, stripes. I looked at those bad boys and I thought, geez, I hope we play well because a lot of kids are going to be wearing these on Halloween, you know. <laughs> I tell you the truth, when you're wearing a helmet like that, it's one of those situations you either got to put up or shut up. You either got to play or they're going to laugh you out of the league. The Bengals earned their stripes, making it all the way to the Super Bowl. It changed everything within the franchise. I really think that some teams, a uniform change, can really spark a run of excellence. Put those Tiger stripes on the helmet, and suddenly they were kind of a team to be reckoned with. If we had stumbled out of the gate and, and uh, not played well and been the bumbling Bengals, the uniforms would have taken a severe beating, I'm sure. The uniforms haven't changed, though. That's one thing. And you look at a lot of these teams, they change uniforms every two years. The Lions haven't changed them in 30. Well, not technically, but their classic look seems unchanging. Just like these other iconic uniforms that didn't make our list. I've always loved the big blue of the New York Giants because it brings back the history of the game. You got the, the country's colors on there, you know, red, white, and blue, NY on the side of their helmet. They should be on the list. It's the, the memories of Otto Graham, you know, of Johnny Unitas, of uh, those kind of guys winning the big games back then, and you still see those uniforms. That's the NFL to me. I like that. Well, as uni should. I'm waiting for Joe Namath to come out of the locker room. George Sauer, Don Mater, Bill Rademacher. I like him. Green Bay Packers, home green uniform, autumn colors for an autumn sport. That's perfection. I really do like the Green Bay Packers. The Chicago Bears are kind of like if it ain't broke, don't fix it type of approach to the uniform. There is one team that sums it up. The number seven uniform of all time, the Browns. It's been the same forever. It's never changed. I think the Browns have classy uniforms. They're simple, they're plain. I love, you know, just the, the simple helmet with the one stripe and the classic blend of brown and orange. It's so ugly, it's beautiful in, in terms of what Cleveland and this team is all about. I like brown and I like, you know, burnt orange. I don't know if together it just seems so dark and gloomy and sad all the time. Let's look at the situation, first of all. They're named after Paul Brown. Paul Brown doesn't want the team named after him. They do it anyway. So now we're, we have a, a human being as a mascot. So we're we going to put a Paul Brown portrait on, on our helmet for a logo. That's not going to work. So got to have a blank helmet. We can't be named Browns and not have a brown outfit. We just can't. So now we have a blank helmet and a brown jersey. What do you do with that? This is a uniform that stands for a long history and heritage that they're proud of, and I just don't think that there's a reason to change it. The mighty Cleveland Browns, defending world champions, come charging onto the field. Our number seven uniform begs the question, does success allow for a fashion faux pas? Somehow the Browns get away with it. Let's go! When are they ever going to do something about those uniforms? I think it's defiance now. I, I mean, I think it's reached a point where part of the whole Browns thing is to just be brown and just be orange and just be kind of ugly maybe not fans of the brown and orange are particular about how the colors are combined i'm not a big brown pants guy i don't like the brown pants i really don't think you're going to see their their legs when when they're in brown pants when white legs are crisscrossing against a dark background we cannot mistake that they are flying Playing orange is always probably a good thing to do. Tell Cleveland to take them Halloween pumpkin helmets and put them somewhere. Look like a pumpkin patch. <laughs> In 1975, orange found its way to the Browns' pants. We all looked ridiculous in the 70s, so uh, why not football uniforms? No. No, no, no. Despite being a symbol of the cardiac kids, the change to orange pants was not popular. They have to go and mess with perfection. When you get a perfect steak, would you put sauce on it at that point? No. Where did it all go wrong? That's how I felt when they went to the orange pants. When did it all slip away from me? Why? Stop it. This was perfect. How did I ever lose my way? 
They had the sizzle and the steak, and they didn't need to go with the orange pants. But the unique logoless orange helmet solidifies their spot at number seven on our list. It separates them from everybody else. I don't think there's any reason why you would want to have a logo on the helmet. If they, if they, if they put a logo on that helmet, they're not going to be the Browns anymore. He, Jim Brown, one of the greatest of all time, never had a logo on his helmet. And, and when you think about the history of this team and still maintaining that ugly uniform and those ugly helmets, uh, that's consistency. I mean, that's the kind of thing that people, I think, hold dear to their hearts and can go through generations. The Browns, I don't know what to say. You know, they're, they're always throwback. They're just so plain. It's like the city. It's always, like, overcast and brown. The number six uniform of all time, Pee Wee jerseys. Pee Wee uniforms are the best because it's mesh. It's probably worth about a buck fifty. You know, it's two sizes too big, and it has Costuro's trucking on the back. One of the most exciting moments in my career is the day I got my Pop Warner uniform. It's like your very first kiss. It's like your very first job. You point to that moment as a young football player. Those are things that stay in your mind. No. Isn't this the NFL we're talking about? I mean, what are we talking about? We're talking about top 10 uniforms in the National Football League, not about some freaking Pee Wee team. My first team was 1985. I played for the Lakeland Lumberjacks. I played running back, never had shoes on, anything like that. I always just kept my shoes off playing football. Back in the day, it didn't matter. First started playing in seventh grade. It's the St. Jude Flying Jays. Started out as a running back. Toward the end of my seventh grade year, I started playing quarterback. Age seven, seven-year-old little Mighty Mike. And our chant used to be, what the Falcons do? Swoop, swoop. I'll never forget it. I, mean, I had a great time. I think it's very special for players to think about their Pee Wee days. That was when they were saying, ooh, I want to be that guy. And then 15 years later, you're that guy, and you know that there's some kid on some little field with no grass that's doing the exact same thing you did when you were a kid. And for some players, the heroes were right in their own backyard. Hey, who's your favorite football player, then? My dad. Your dad's your favorite football player, too? Well, you're on the right track. You're going to be a football player when you grow up? Mm-hmm. I don't have a thought about peewee uniforms. I mean, you put me in a bad spot, I'm going to start commenting on little kids in uniforms. Huh? You should take it off your list. Anytime you're a kid and you're playing an organized sport and you get issued your first uniform, you treat that uniform as something like, hey, I'm playing a real sport with a real number, just like the guys I watch on TV. Our number six uniform proves that the NFL breathes itself. My favorite NFL team was Minnesota Vikings growing up. Chris Carter was probably my favorite player. My favorite team was Pittsburgh. The, the Steelers were the first team I played for. I was five years old. You know, I remember Terry Bradshaw. Niners for my team. We had season tickets to the Niners. Four years old, my dad took me to one of the games. And of course, it was the NFC Championship game when Dallas played the Niners at home, and Mike Clark made the catch. It turned out to be one of the best games of all time. Well, when it comes to the kids first getting cool uniform, it's like magic, and they don't want to put it away. They keep trying it on over and over again. They would hang it as art if they could. If I could go back in time and grab my Mort's Bootery number eight and have it framed, I would pay thousands of dollars. I should have stole that thing years ago because for every kid, your first uniform has that special meaning. No, nothing special about it. It's great for the kid. Ooh, I got a uniform. I'm an adult man. I don't look at little kids' uniforms. Sick. Up next, which white-wearing team fits this description? Boldness. That's the first thing that would come to my mind is bold. Really bold. So, you know, if they're bold enough to do that, then, you know, maybe they have some other things up their sleeve. It's nice to see a different color uniform. Before we continue our countdown, let's take a look back at the list so far. Number 10, where you aren't looking. Summing Trump's cheerleader outfits. Number 9, these creamsicles didn't melt. I don't think the uniform was ugly because that's what we had to wear. Number 8, 
Welcome to the jungle. Man, that's awesome. You get to wear the bangle stripe. Number seven, no mistake by the lake. I think they're boring at all. Number six, aren't you glad I didn't say orange? For every kid, your first uniform has that special meaning. Number five uniform of all time, the 49ers of the 80s. I'm trying to come up with the best way to describe it. How do you describe uh, perfection? I don't know. Um, I'm thinking like the blush of a summer cherry and the gold of like a champion, like a great Notre Dame helmet when they're good. And you, and you combine these images like the best of nature and then great championship gold. And it's just all of a sudden I'm seeing Joe and Jerry and Ronnie and what a uniform. Pardon me while I have a moment here. Great uni, love them. When you look at the theory of product, you know, when you walk through stores, red is the first color that men see. The clarity of the cherry red color and the white numbers is very readable. Even on a gray day and with bad light, you're still going to see this color. Touchdown, 49ers! You would think 49ers could be a pretty cheesy uniform. Gold was discovered, hey, let's put them in gold. But the cherry red was so gorgeous. The gold was tasteful. It's really all about the gold pants and the width of the stripe on the side of the pants, so thick with the red, white, and red stripe. If you look at Jerry Rice's profile from those days, it's like the whole side of his leg. And that was my favorite part about that old uni. Man, that, that pant stripe was too wide. The whole uniform is just, it's like a good time. Gold, 80s, you know, Afro, sequins, headbands, shiny leg warmers. Come and see them play, you're gonna have a good time. When I think of the 80s, Niners of the 80s kind of bookended by two plays, the, the famous catch. Caught by Clark! And then John Taylor's catch in the Super Bowl against the Bengals. And they wore that same basic uniform through that whole period. Fit, you know, the way they played and all the passes and the short passes and the way they, you know, kind of chalked it up and everything. And I always thought that there's a discussion to be had whether Secretariat is a great horse's name or whether because he was such a good horse, Secretariat. So I think that's the way I feel about the 49ers uniform. In 1994, our number five jersey had alterations. Bill Walsh returned to the front office in the late 90s. And by then, they had replaced the cherry red with a cardinal red and it was white pants which you know the white on white on the road looked really terrible you know the gold was more metallic there was a black element to it and I saw Bill Walsh get almost as upset as I've ever seen him and he just said you know they had the greatest classiest uniforms in all of sports and they just took it and they ruined it and I don't know why it was hard to see uh, them winning that Super Bowl because they were wearing those hideous looking uniforms with the black backdrop. Hated them. Hated them. Niners have five Super Bowls. You know, maybe it's like a family with five kids and there's that one child where you're kind of maybe is a, you're a little disappointed in him. The Niners wearing those white pants with those shadow numbers. When you're not wearing the cherry red and, and the champion gold, and then you're just, you're, you're the black sheep of the family. I'm sorry. In 2009, the herd was heard and the classic look came back. The Niners uniform, they really don't need much changing. Colors wise, you're doing just fine. You know, sometimes you get it made in the shade and your only job is to not let the tree fall on you. The number four uniform of all time, the Cowboys wear white. Number four. They said that they put the hole in the roof at Texas Stadium so God could see his team. God wouldn't have it any other way than have the Cowboys wear white. I don't exactly know where the Cowboys' white uniforms belong. But I do know if you're looking for the classic look with the star and all that, that's one of the classic looks in the history of the league. When we think of the Cowboys, you think of them wearing white. You know, that, that's just what the Cowboys look like. It's just such a clean look. We have so many connotations for white. Clean, positive, good, virtuous. They're America's team, aren't they? Not including their Thanksgiving throwbacks, the Cowboys have worn their white jerseys at home in every game since 1964. Yes, they're arrogant, but that's America's team. So they dictate. If you hated that team, it's just, oh, here they come, look at them, they think they're so great with their white uniforms. They played into the Hollywood notion that 
And the guy that wore the white hat was the good guy. The guy that wore the black hat was the villain. And the cowboys were the good guys. They were America's team. They had Captain America quarterback in the team. With three, set. Come in there with a lot of different teams where you'd see what their colors were. They would wear red or blue or green, you know, and the Cowboys always had the white. If you just wore the blue colors, you know, it'd always be a blue and white game. And that was the idea behind it. That was Textram's idea to have more visual interest at his home field, uh, you know, that his fans would have a, a more interesting thing to look at each week. I love that they wear white at home, in part because it sets up uniform gamesmanship. How many sports does that come into play? You know, the Cowboys sort of allow for that by having this white at home policy. They felt that white was lucky, and they, they felt more so that blue was unlucky. It seemed like whenever they wore their blue jersey in a big game, they'd lose. The blue jersey jinx dates back to 1968, when the Browns upset the blue-clad Cowboys in a playoff game. It continued in Super Bowl V. As the designated home team, the Cowboys were forced to wear blue. Dallas lost the Super Bowl to the Colts. They got to the point where other teams were buying in to the white jersey superstition. In that NFC Championship game in the early 80s, the Eagles chose to wear white at home to invoke what was seen as the curse of the Cowboys blue jersey. Well, the opposing teams always believed that it was a jinx for the Cowboys, and so the Cowboys believed it too. So you always thought the Cowboys were going to lose when they wore those blue jerseys, and they usually did. But all five of Dallas's Super Bowl titles have come in white. Seems nothing can stop the good guy from winning in the end. Cowboys back to back in that it's just a brand that nobody else will ever be able to take anything away from. That uniform really, I think, defined a lot of people's memories of football. Coming up. There was a survey done once that their uniforms were the second highest gang selling uniforms in the world. You know, so, uh, it sort of fit their image. What are the most notorious uniforms of all time? When it comes to black uniforms, there are a few things to consider. Fashion. When you insert black into any color palette, it kind of just neutralizes things and lets the other color pop. Temperature. Playing indoors, you know, makes it a little bit easier to wear those darker colored jerseys. And of course, intimidation. They gave us the black uniforms for a reason. They put the black unis on us too. Damn. It's totally disrespecting us. I think it's been proven that if you see black, it's like a bull seeing red, you know? It is that whole mystique about you coming out there and being the bad guy. The bad guy color has definitely caught on. We have something called BFBS, which is black for black's sake. There's so many teams just doing black for the sake of doing black. It has no part of their history. It's not one of their official team colors. And then suddenly, hey, we're wearing a black alternate jersey this season. Everybody's wearing black. That must mean that black is the hottest, toughest, best football color. This black thing is very simple. It goes back to one team, the Oakland Raiders. Number one. Like number one, right? Top to number, you for number one. We're number one on your list, right? You mean number no. The number three uniform of all time. The silver and black. You can think about black and gold or green and gold and kind of figure out who you're talking about. When you say silver and black, you know it's the Raiders. You talk about the classic uniforms. You talk about a, a singular look that defines a franchise. That is a case where the uniform color matches the identity of the team. Dark, black, nasty, criminal, outcasts. The color and logo for our number three uniform were born in 1963 when Al Davis took over a fledgling Oakland Raider franchise. Al Davis, I know, always liked those colors in part because he really made the players look big. And Batter came with the wins. The Raiders are bound for the Super Bowl for the third time. The total resurgence of the silver and black. The Raiders of the 70s and the 80s, the total Al Davis Raiders, with Lyle Alzado, it was like pro wrestling. I mean, you had your bad guy. 
They were telling you they're bad. They're not hiding at all. They're just like, we are totally going to cheat. We don't really care. We're going to hit you late because we have a helmet that has the, the guy with an eye patch on it. They would come out in the field. You knew that the other side was looking at them going, they look bigger than we do, they look faster than we do, and they sure look nastier than we do. It became part of the Raiders' brand image as outlaws. Did a color scheme actually affect the roster makeup and behavior of the team? I mean, that's sort of an interesting thing to think about. Could you see them in, in one of those Chargers, Jack Tatum in a powder blue jersey? I don't think so. You know, a lot of jerseys nowadays are kind of fancy. There's a lot of stuff on them. Those Raiders jerseys, there's just something so simple, so pure. It just looks good. Silver pants, striped down the side, black jersey, silver numerals, and that silver helmet. That's it. You have to live up to the helmet, though. That's the tough part of the Raiders. When you're playing very poorly, suddenly it's like, why do these guys have, like, that guy and their helmet, I mean, they look, look stupid. Now they look like a roller derby team. However, fans of the silver and black represent why they deserve to be on our list. So, Damn right. I always sport my colors. I represent all the way. Want to see my chonies? See, the Raiders had their colors long before we had the black hole. But I think the Raiders fans, being the intense maniacs that they are, just saw the black. They said, wait a minute. I'm wearing black. So they wore black. Wait a minute. These guys are nasty. And they wear black. We'll put a spike on. We'll wear a helmet. We'll wear face masks. We'll carry hatchets to the game. We'll carry swords to the game. How did he lose his eye? Do we know? Does anybody know how the Raider lost his eye? I mean, that's whatever happened to him, we don't want to know. Who's number two? Cowboys? Coming up. That's an elegant uniform. Nostalgia mixed with controversy when Top 10 Uniforms continues. No, you will not fool me on this. You were wrong. When it comes to uniforms, everyone loves to talk old school, especially if it didn't make our list. This is clever on your part because you have an alibi for not putting the Los Angeles Rams with the blue helmet and the white horns. That's a mistake. The Rams aren't the only uniforms that just disappeared one day. You know what I especially miss? The Eagles, Kelly Green. This is a beautiful thing. That was the generation which I played, which was two, three decades ago. And I miss those. Falcons circa 89. Like Dion's first season, red helmet, black falcon, white uniform, and then the silver pants badass. When you think of the Broncos, you think of the Orange Crush. It was different. No one else had that. I was a little sorry to see that lost. Oh, talk about mistakes. Hopefully these looks will be seen again someday, thanks to the number two uniform on our list. The number two uniform of all time, throwbacks. Oh, we all love the throwbacks, yeah. I love the throwback jerseys. I think they're fantastic. The throwbacks from the standpoint of the marketing trend of the last decade, to me, are an abomination. What about we? I love throwbacks because people have never seen those uniforms in color, if they've seen them at all. Totally opposed to throwback uniforms, especially some of the ones that go back to the 50s. I mean, there's a reason they changed. Everything that was once old is new again in the fast one. I mean, come on. Back to the old Raiders. Old uniforms, back to the old Raiders. There should be at least one team every week that has a throwback uniform. It's this, this classic NFL, you know what I mean? See, Al still got, he's got his uh, old uniform on. Yeah, he never did get away from That's the same one he wears now. Old timers. There are good throwbacks and there are not good throwbacks. The Bills throwbacks are beautiful. The old OJ years, gorgeous. That Patriot throwback is awesome. I love that, that was a hot look. Pat Patriot looked good. He had that look on his face. He was crouching over, ready in that three-point stance. And that's just good. I mean, because the Founding Fathers, I think that when they were done putting the country together, they were thinking, you know what we need? Somebody to hike a football through his legs. Such just good times. That's America. 
Some are just ridiculous. I mean, that Broncos uniform was ridiculous last year. That rotten banana look that they had it was embarrassing. It was the socks that did it. The brown and yellow I'm okay with, but those tall socks that had to strip, that had to go. Why did they wear those uniforms? Because the Broncos' original owner was too cheap to buy new ones, and those were salvaged from an old college bowl game, the Copper Bowl, and he, like, he got used uniforms and recycled them. Remember the Titans, baby. 50 years ago. Throwback. Sometimes our number two uniform can cause some identification problems. There's a lot going on during a football game, and now i got to figure out which team is wearing what. Really, light blue and yellow? Oh, that's our team? It's an awful day to be a Philadelphia Eagle. Awful. Keep my team in a uniform that I can understand. But what's not confusing is how this game is going to end. Oilers, Oilers, victorious. Not Titans. If it's the Titans, that means Jets won. But if it's the Oilers, that means the Titans won. Y'all figure it out. You look at the retro, and there is such a, a trend in fashion always to look back, and that's very beautiful as a historical thing. It gives the player some sense of history, because I think a lot of these guys nowadays have lost the history of the sport. It's probably really cool for the people who were like seven or eight when it was first on the field, sitting in the living room with their dad with a bowl of popcorn, and the feeling of seeing it alive again is probably substantial. What a throwback, huh? Still to come. There should be only one throwback jersey on there, and that's That's the only throwback. In fact, nobody should else should be allowed to wear throwback jerseys. And if you hadn't put them number one, shame on you. If it was a dress contest, we'll win that day. Before we reveal who actually won, let's review our list. Number 10, mostly skin. The less uniform you see on the cheerleader, the better the uniform. Number 9. What is that on a helmet? That's a buck. A uniform no pirate would plunder. Number 8. The Bengals earn their stripes. When you're wearing a helmet like that, it's one of those situations you either got to put up or shut up. Number seven, orange and brown. It's so ugly, it's beautiful. Number six is so sweet. It's like your very first kiss. Number five, San Fran's winning look of the 80s. Number four, pulling off pure and simple. Yes, they're arrogant, but that's America's team. Number three, the silver and black. That is a case where the uniform color matches the identity of the team. And number two, this is clever on your part to do this. We snuck in all throwbacks. Well, all but one. And the number one uniform of all time, the Chargers powder blue. Number one. The greatest uniform in NFL history. Love that uniform. Best uniform ever. Love it, yes. You finally got it right. The powder blues are the greatest uniforms ever in football history. This is beautiful. This is simplicity. This is cool. This is funky. It's all of that. I love that uniform. The best thing about the powder blue Chargers throwback. I love the numbers on the helmets. They're the only uniforms regularly worn in the NFL these days with the numbers on the helmets. The powder blue Charger uniform, to me, was the best-looking uniform in the American Football League. You look at that light blue uniform, and you think of the players that wore the powder blue. John Hadle, Lance Allworth. The elusive Allworth grabs a quick pass, and he cuts back. Fists and scampers to a whole herd of baffled buffalo. Everybody looks like Bambi in those powder blue uniforms. That's what's so cool about it. It could be 6'6", 350, and you still look like Lance Allworth. I know we got that throwback, beautiful, best jersey in the league color. The only reason people like it is because they like to say powder blue. It just feels cool. No one cares about the Houston Oilers uniforms. If we called the, oh, the Oilers, remember the white, red, and powder blue? We'd still love the Oilers, but we didn't. 
Powder blue doesn't sound like a football color, by the way. When you think baby blue, you think two-year-old boys in pajamas with feet on them. <laughs> this color, I think that this is definitely strong enough for a guy to wear and not feel fluffy. Attention. Powder blue is a great color. It's, a, it's absolutely gorgeous. It has a bit of a fantasy to the color because it's not a color you see everywhere. Perhaps more commonly in a comic book? It feels kind of superhero-ish to me. And so what do superheroes wear? They don't wear uniforms, they wear costumes. And I, I think that today's athletes are much more like superheroes. You know, they're ridiculously cut. They're superhuman. Hey, you think you're strong, huh? I see you out there. As for their costume-style lightning bolt... They're implying speed. They're implying strength. Everyone's afraid of lightning, right? You don't want to get struck by it. That lightning bolt gave motion, you know, it was electrifying. It looked exciting. I think it's basically the NFL fan base on the couch trying to figure out their mommy issues. It's a beautiful uniform. And it's beautiful for the city of San Diego. Would that be the right uniform for Des Moines? No. It's beautiful for San Diego because that's the way life is in San Diego. It's powder blue. It's sunny lightning bolt. It's, it's beautiful. You can kind of match it up with palm trees and the sun and 75 degree weather year round. It goes, it goes with the flow. Why they ever changed to the dark blue, I'll never know. 1974 offered a fresh start. While the fun of a hometown carnival hadn't changed, the team had. The redecorated Chargers sported change from top to bottom. Hated it. Hated it. Still hate it. In 1974, the Chargers switched to a darker blue and have never officially gone back to the uniform that is number one on our list. They, they do wear it a couple of times a year. I know there are fans who would like to see them wear it all the time. I wish the Chargers would wear the powder blues from now to the end of time. I need one of the Spanos family to explain to me why in the world you don't petition the NFL to wear that uniform every day. Throughout the offseason, too. Go to work dressed in powder blue suit. The newer uniform does incorporate the powder blue color if you look closely. But for now, the top spot on our list is just an alternate. When you've got the best looking uniform in the world, you should use the best looking uniform in the world. We agree. That's why it's number one. Powder blue? Chargers. What? As expected, not everyone was happy with our list. If I go to China and I walk up and go, hey, powder blue and gold, they're gonna go, San Diego Chargers, right? No, if I go to China and go, hey, silver and black, they go, oh, Raiders! Hell yeah. Still, others just love the topic. I think we should just have an entire series devoted to uniforms. You know, this is one episode, I think an entire series. You know, top 10 Eagles uniforms, top 10 AFL uniforms, top 10 uniforms post-1996. This is the best series you guys have ever done. Naturally, not everyone agreed. I, I don't believe that uh, uniforms have anything to do with anything. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm sorry, guys. You guys are making me mad. I know. That's all right. You got my back. I got you. <laughs> Literally. 